Hey guys, it's Dan Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. Today we have a quick question, and in the question is basically we have a 5x5 five five grid, and we need to take any cell that is highlighted in, let's say, yellow, and we're going to delete that row dynamically using VBA. So in this question, we have just uh, A through E, and we have just 1 through 5 every time. And when this report runs, our user finds that there's certain ones that are yellow. So we're going to go ahead and do equals ran between. We just want to have some dummy data. So how about between 1 and 1,000? Hit uh, in parentheses, and then Control Enter. That's going to populate all these. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that, control C, and right click SV, that's S for special, V for value, and that will actually paste the real value. So right click SV, and now we have the permanent values, escape key, the permanent values in each of these. So now we have some sample data. I'm not going to actually uh, run his report. I don't even know what his report looked like. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go to the home ribbon and just make some of these randomly yellow so we can test this out. And then we can redo that if we want to. Now the first thing we need to do is create a loop. We can either have uh, it go from 1 to 5 and then just kind of offset 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, in order to find that. Or we can just go from row 1 to 5 or column, I guess, 1 to 5 go from 1 to 5 and then we could do another loop within that so the first iteration of that loop we go 1 2 3 4 5 and then the next loop we go 1 2 3 4 5 so we just use two different uh, four next loops and that would work too either way kinda doesn't really matter it's a preference thing the other thing we have to do is we just have to figure out how to get the interior color and figure out which one is yellow or more specifically and uh, more easily uh, if we can just ask it as long as it is not whatever the interior color uh, of a blank or no fill cell so that way it would cover any other color uh, so you could go either route I'm gonna show you how I would do this I'm gonna hit alt F11 to get started now I have this new workbook here delete highlighted rows blah 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 and that will be available for download just click on the link in the video description you can download that for free but we're gonna go ahead and create a new module for this workbook I'm going to ignore my personal uh, private workbook that I carry along with me and we're gonna go ahead and now that we're in module one we're gonna create a new macro I don't really care what we call this we're gonna call this test one two three don't write that if you already have a test one two three in that module or it'll give you an error alright so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with that loop and then we're gonna do a little bit of testing in the immediate window to figure out how to get that interior color that we need so we're gonna say for X is going to be equal to one all the way to five so that's a little loop and I always for good measure say next and then I repeat reiterate whatever that variable name was now anything inside here I always hit the tab key so it looks nicer to be indented but that is a preference thing it just is a lot nicer looking so we're gonna go from 1 5 X is gonna be 1 then X is gonna be 2 and go through all these commands then 3 4 and 5 so we might want to go ahead and now that we've gone 1 2 3 Four, five. We might also want to make an interior loop or uh, a loop within a loop to go one, two, three, four, and five. That way. So we're going to say for X, uh, not X, excuse me, I already used X. Let's say I. I will be the column. Or you could say current column uh, if you want it to be very specific. For the current column is going to be equal to one to five. Again, we have a five by five grid. So we're just going five in and five down. So next current column number and tab again so I'm indenting I'm keeping it really clear where we're at in the code next thing we'll do we need to play around with this interior color thing and how do we do that well if you go to the immediate window which if it's closed you can hit control G there's the immediate window and you can actually say either debug dot print space or if you want to use the shorthand you can use a question mark space bar so I'm gonna say question mark what what is the answer to this question what is the active cell dot let's see let's do interior dot color okay let's let's ask what the interior dot color is of the active cell the active cell is a one so that's blank so that's interesting it's this mess now what if I select a yellow one? Alt F11 to get that back. If I hit this and hit enter again, I'm asking a new question about the current active cell. So that one, we could say if uh, if the interior or the current cell dot interior dot color 
is not equal to this yellow thing, or we could say if it is equal to this, which is uh, this white background. I mean, either way, that would be fine. So since this is uh, a little more versatile, and we don't really care about yellow, and we don't have like a bunch of colors, let's just say as long as it's not white, as long as it's not a blank back color, uh, any other color, we do want to delete that row. So here we go. We're going to say, uh, using the cells object, because we can say x is the row, comma, cur call is the column number. So I'm going to say if, and here's the cell we're going to use, cells object. And remember, what's the row we're going to use? Yep, x. And what's the column we're going to use? Well, that is the current column. And I could have, uh, instead of using x, I could have said cur row to keep it consistent. Either way, it's really going to be fine. So I'm just showing you both flavors. So if that current cell, this is actually representative of a cell in the loop. It's first it's going to be this cell, then it's going to be this cell, then it's going to be this cell, because that's the way the, the, um, the flow is. So if that dot interior dot color, or excuse me, is not equal to this, whatever this white uh, back color was, then, oop, not that one. and then uh, end if for good measure, tab. So if that is true, excuse me, if that is not equal to a blank back color, then we're going to delete the row. First of all, how do you delete the row? So we could say, we could actually just use this, this dot entire row dot delete, and that would actually delete the entire current row. Or you could also say rows x, um, but this is fine. So that particular cell dot entire row dot delete. Now what is that going to do to x? Once row uh, 3 is deleted, x is still going to be 3, right? But really, this row will be scooched up to 3. So now 3, we could just uh, restart that row, I guess, technically. Uh, restart 3 and then let it go all the way through again. So let's just simulate that really quick. I'm going to hit F8. If you're on a Mac, it's Command-Shift-I. But I'm going to hit F8 to step through the code because it's a lot, lot cooler that way. We can see everything in slow-mo. So X is 1. Then current call, if I hit F8, current call is also 1. So 1, comma 1, that's A1. So if that cell, dot interior, dot color, is not equal to this white back color, well, it is. And in fact, all of them on row 1, of course, are going to be uh, that white. So it's going to skip over. Now we get to go to the next X. We get to go to the next row, basically, row 2 now. And we know, we can look ahead, that row 2 is all, it's a bust. Those are all going to be white back color. So it's boring. So let's skip ahead. Now here's where it's going to get good. Uh, current call is uh, equal to 1 again, but X is row 3 now. So row 3, and that is, it's going to be on the second one there. So, not this one, but the next one on column 2, the interior color is going to be something different. So here's what happens. Let's see what happens in slow motion. If we delete this row of row 3 of this cell, let's go ahead and delete it. Bam! But check it out. X is still 3. We never told it what to do. We really just need to tell it to go back to, uh, to right here. So right here is where we need to go back to. Because why? Well, because we need to actually, you can leave X alone. It can stay three. It can stay what it is. But we need to start the column search on the current row, which is still three. We need to start this from one to five all over again, because right now we're on row uh, column three or two. So once we've done the delete thing, immediately after that line, we need to tell it we need to go to right here where I have marked. So let's create a label and we'll call it post delete or post deletion. And whenever you make a label, all you have to do is put a little colon at the end. In order to send it to that label, you simply say go to post delete. So after you delete, go to post deletion, go to post delete. So bam, it goes here. I hit F8, it goes here. And now we just, we're going to keep X. It's the current row. It's correct. But now we're going to uh, we're going to actually tell it to start the column search all over again. Start it at one, so it's still looking at column or excuse me row three. But now it's started over the column search from one to five. So now we're checking this row, and we know we are going to find it on the fourth column. There's yellow, right? So there it is. 
we're going to delete that entire row and we're going to go to post delete because we're still really on row three technically we're just going to start the column search all over again there's nothing here and now it uh, it's going to go ahead and loop through but as long as you don't have like a million cells this isn't really a big deal for it to go ahead and do a couple extra rows because at speed it looks like this bam okay so i'm going to not label those but i'm just going to make maybe this one and this one uh, to be yellow so that we can see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and run it at full speed. I'm going to hit F5. Bam, it's done. See, at speed is really quick. Now, if you do a lot of deleting, let's say you have a thousand or ten thousand rows and several of them sporadically are maybe yellow. If you have a lot of things like this where you have to delete or copy and paste instead of just using the uh, dot value equals it could slow everything down so I will give you one quick tip about speeding this up uh, for the time being. Uh, we're going to do application dot screen updating equals false. What that does is instead of revealing this Oh, I have to move all the cells up so that the user can see it. And now we're, oh, we've got to delete this one. I have to move all the cells up in front of them. They have to see it visually. Well, no. We turn screen updating off, uh, which we will, it'll all by default return after the macro is done. But we could say application.screen updating equals true at the end. But once we do that screen updating, it actually does all the stuff in its mind, but we but it doesn't update the screen until it's all over. And then it goes, bam, here's the final new result. And that saves Excel a lot of effort, which means we gain a lot of speed doing that. Another thing we can do is application, I have to spell application, application.calculation equals, we're going to change it from automatic, which is our default, to manual calculation. So that way, it only uh, would recalculate any formulas or anything like that once we turn it back to manual, or if we say application.calculate, uh, or sheet1 or sheet2.calculate. So I'm going to take this, say equals the manual, or excuse me, back to automatic. So it goes into manual mode and the screen is not flashing and having to update so frequently and that makes it even faster so if we do this maybe this maybe even another one here and then we run it now at speed it's going to be even faster bam all right so uh, please take a look at this if you want to download this free workbook you can go ahead and click the link in the video description and check out some of our courses uh, on excel vba is fun.com as well as some of our blog posts and free content and um, thanks again for watching and god bless don't forget to like and subscribe by the way all right we'll see you next time bye bye